Hi, hi, Sarah Panera. How you doing? I'm good. How are you, Carrie? <laughs> I'm doing really good. And we, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just take the reins right now and explain what we're doing a little bit. Because we've been meaning to do this for over a month. But I think that, you know, the universe prevents, quote, roadblocks for a reason. I don't think we're supposed to do this until today. I think yeah. that we are going to combine this video with the launching of your new Facebook site all on the beginning of spring. Woohoo! Woohoo! I want you to take over <laughs> because I know that your Facebook page has been in the works for a while and it's yes. very successful. I, I, um, I happen to be an admin, so I get notifications all the time for people wanting yeah. to join, this, that, and the other. So tell us what your group is about. Yes, and thank you. And thank you for being a volunteering to be an admin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the name of my group is, or I should say the co-creation between Adam and I, is Doing Grief Differently with Adam and Sarah. So I've been wanting to do a group for a long time. And like Carrie, you just said, that the universe... They're like little roadblocks or speed bumps that I just wasn't ready to come completely out and um, show the world how I'm doing grief differently. Uh, and that's by communicating with my son Adam and Spirit. And um, so we've created a website to help others to move forward, not just learning how to communicate, but just the whole process of, of creating a new norm um, yes. on all different levels through the grief through the weaving of in and out of all the levels of grief. Um, and my son passed away suddenly in 2014, and I met Carrie uh, the summer of 2014. So January, so it was about seven months in when I met you, Carrie, and that was through channeling Eric. Um, and then we became fast and furious friends through all our ups and downs. Yes. And, um, and it's brought us all the way to here. I know. We're like super chicks. Woohoo! <laughs> Changing the world. But you know what you just said? You said something the way, and I can't remember how you said exactly, something like weaving in and out of the different stages of grief because it's not always like cut and dry. Like, okay, I'm changing the page. I'm on the next one now, and I'm not doing that anymore because it's easy to slip back into it, into the, you know, the, the depths and despair of grief. Yeah. So can we start there? I mean, everybody knows what grief feels like, but, but I think what we want to learn from you is how to do it differently. So how would you pull yourself out of those holes? Um, well, it wasn't easy in the beginning. I needed help. I needed, um, I had a few good friends and good close family members that kept pulling me up under my armpits to get me up, just to get me motivated. Mm -hmm. I went to, back to work right away, but I was like an autopilot because it was something I was constantly doing. I didn't have to think. I just right. kind of went through the motions or whatever. Uh, but um, I started like going in and actually praying. I thought I knew what prayer was all about. I was raised Catholic, but I didn't. Mm. <laughs> I had no idea until I really got into it and realized yeah. that the praying was going deep within and then being quiet so you could receive an answer. Could you, I wasn't could doing you that before. Consider that a form of meditation? Sure, sure. And some of us need a more structured form of meditation, mm -hmm. right, versus um, just saying go listen to music and mm -hmm. go to La La Land or whatever. So I needed more structure because I lived a very structured life. I didn't think I lived a very structured life, but I did. So, um, so for me, it worked well uh, learning a little bit more structure, whether it was guided meditations, um, our prayer rituals, and um, different mantras and, and affirmations that are already written out that I was using. Mm -hmm. um, I knew I would be able to reach and communicate with Adam. I don't know how, but in my heart, I knew that. I knew that this was part of my calling and that I was going to be doing it. Why did you I know didn't that? understand that. Can you pinpoint? Can you pinpoint? I, could be it maybe lots Elisa? of things. Was it Elisa's well, influence, or did you just always know? Oh, yeah, I always knew that, way before oh, I met Elisa. Beautiful. It was, um, I mean, I believed in the afterlife, but I didn't have that pull to go into it right. and search it and do existed. all that, right? It just existed. Yeah. And I would say, oh, I wish I could communicate with my, my mother or my father. Or, oh, I wish I could communicate with my cat that I love dearly, you know, all that. But I never did anything to move forward to do that. I just thought, oh, it, you know, it's right. there. Right. It's there. And then after Adam, well, we were getting signs and communication right away. But with Adam, it was like, no, I know I knew this, but I know it was Adam pushing me. I mean, it was my whole family, of course, helping, but I, you just had that knowing 
even though I was in grief and he didn't feel it at the time because all you could think about was that very yeah. moment of dark grief. Right. You couldn't even think, you didn't even think the sun was going to come up tomorrow. Uh, yes. You could try, right? You're just trying to get to the next minute. <laughs> next minute to breathe. Right. Uh, and, and that's all unknown and scary. So that was, that was hard too. So it's not like you pick up a book and a manual and you go, okay, today I do this and tomorrow I got to do this. There wasn't that. Yeah. And I would beg, I would scream and, you know, release my anger, you know, that I at least needed a manual or a cheat sheet or something, <laughs> cliff notes. Right. Uh, right. Something, even though all of our journeys are different, but I needed something because I didn't even know. It was just like, it'd be like opening up the door and you, you know, normally we know what our front yard looks like, but opening the door and you don't even know what's there. It's just blank. A blank yeah, slate. I get that. It'd be like, you know, just being plopped into a completely different dimension and opening your door. I have no yeah. idea what I am, who I am, what I'm to do next. It's just completely foreign. I can appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So then I started diving into um, anything spiritual and metaphysical. Uh, within like two weeks, I started, you know, from watching movies to renting books in the library. Um, anything and everything I can get my hands on. And, and I know other people, they, you know, they kind of shun away from that. But I truly believe it because when you're in grief, you need to, like, be able to side sidetrack, go off a different path because all you're thinking about is the grief. Mm -hmm. so, so I needed something to fill that space to focus on, mm -hmm. you know. And I needed things to read and to read other people's experiences and to learn. Uh, and I was already a believer of Teresa Caputo. Um, golly, so many of them. Sylvia Brown, John Edward. Uh, James Van I was already a believer of it, but I just it wasn't something I needed to go get a reading, personal reading for myself. It wasn't myself. personal yet. And now you have this personal. personal thing, which clearly catapulted you in many ways. And you know, you were ta talking a little bit about you know pulling yourself out here and there. And, and while you're talking, one of my memories is oh, it's gonna make me cry. I hope I didn't say this in our last video, but it's share worthy again. But we went to Panera for our first meet, and we did selfies. <clears throat> And I remember you saying to me, this is the first time I've smiled since my son passed. So there you were finding a way already to do grief differently. And it was to share with your friend about the better things and, you know, have some laughs about him and appreciation and smiles still. Yeah. Did you yeah. have an understanding at the beginning or, or through your early studies that in order to communicate, you must be in a better place because the heavy, dense energies, you're just not open. I mean, you know, you still get signs and stuff. But did you take an active course in trying to elevate your vibration so that you could communicate better? Um, I did. I, th I don't think I felt that at the time that's what I was doing. Okay. But, yes, I was in a lot of physical pain, too, within days of Adam passing. Yeah. So, you know, you know how, like, when we think the, everything starts falling on top of us, but we're reaching and we want something to be fixed externally, and then we think it's going to make us feel better? Um, versus we know it's all internal first and then the external things fall into place. So that was figuring that part out. But I knew that um, I didn't know, actually. The first few doctors I went to, they were all diagnosing me with all different things. And it's like, which, nothing against doctors, but you know what I mean? To get in there and it's like, I'm, uh, I was avoiding taking pain medications. I was avoiding taking anti-anxiety. I was avoiding all that because it was a very... Um, athletic and ah, yes. healthy, you, didn't you know, crap in your body. I get that. I didn't want to numb it. Yeah. Even though I know it for many people, they need it. And I understand that. And there's nothing against that. I know that some people do. I've just never have been that way with any kind of medication. I'm not even a big drinker. I had my share back in high school. So I, I heard some stories. I <laughs> that. <laughs> you had that window of being legal at 18 for like what? A week? But, yeah, <laughs> that's right. And I, I got you know, illegally, I got drunk plenty of times in high school, made up for all that. <laughs> but, um, over yeah, I'm over it. I'm over it. Uh oh, so, um, but in, in turn, I knew I had to get back to being myself, which I am I've always been kind of a, a pretty uplifting, positive person. Yeah. So it was by learning that from others and then getting out of that victim mode is what pulls you out. You know, I am not just the mom whose son died, you know you know, freak accident. I am more than that. Um, so I guess it was a little bit of everything. And then, of course, I took uh, Reiki, well, Reiki for myself, self-healing. And then I took the courses, which is all about learning to go within mm -hmm. 
you know, and clearing your energy and feeling better about yourself and learning more about yourself and how the universe works and communication. So, um, and I got a few readings too from mediums in the very beginning too. So all of that all came in together and then I realized yeah. I got to figure out tools, the tools that are going to work for me to lift my energy so um, I can communicate easier. And then even when I started communicating with them, I still was so dowdy. Right. Because you're still not sure. You have no one to validate. Did he say that? No, that was me. I'm not sure. That is you so know. hard to trust oh, that. The trusting, the un that's where that faith and trust. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, and then um, it just started building. And not that I didn't weave in and out of grief still because you mm -hmm. still have your triggers and things you got to work through. Mm -hmm. um, and things come up too, right? There's always things that come up after a, a death in the family too, but just the dynamics of the family. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go. I don't Oh, it was in my last video. I did a solo video, and I was telling about my cousin who died. That family, this has been going on like 15 years. They are still stuck in that place. You know, I mean, obviously it's better, but there hasn't been a lot of healing. From your cousin's death? Yeah. Yeah, there hasn't been a lot of healing. And you just really took, you know, the, took it by the reins and just was like, I'm not going to suffer. I'm going to find the silver lining, and I'm going to, I'm not oh, giving up you. my son. My son is not gone. My son is he's in not a different gone. place. He's in he's a in different place. place. And I'm supposed to know where he's at. <laughs> I'm supposed to know where he's at. Not all of it, because that's the magic. Yes. But, yeah. So you know what I remember, Sarah? Do you remember this being at Elise's one time? We were playing eboard, and we all wanted messages, because we all want a message. Do you remember what, you know what message I'm going to remember right now? No. OK, well, here's Sarah's <laughs> message. Basically, you don't need a message because you're doing great. You are right on track. She got no input other than that. You're doing it, girl. You're doing it. And I was so happy oh, for thanks. you. I was a little and envious. Then I, <laughs> I was like, I'm so not on track. <laughs> but I was really proud. You know, it, was an, it inspired me for you, for me. Oh, well, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. Yes. And, tr and this trust, you know, and with all of us together, that, and then there's that trust because you're still like, you – you want everyone to feel good about everything we're doing at all times. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like when we're together, we want to uplift each other too. Definitely. That's another part of it. That's another part if you, you know, because everybody has, well, not everybody. I'm sure there's some people that are isolated. But when you find somebody that you can click with, and you know, I was just thinking too while we're talking about how, you know, we might think to ourselves how lucky we are to find each other, but we know damn well that it has nothing to do with luck, that we have been friends for infinity, and we live right by each other, and we are so similar in our dispositions. I call myself silver lining, but really, you are, you know, you mm. find it more than I do. <laughs> You're professional. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm working on my this, a better sense of humor like you have. Because you have a great sense of humor. Do you mean rather than your corny sense of humor? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, people love it. People love your cornball. And I know it's Adam, too. You guys are the same, aren't you? Oh, God. Yeah, and you know and I didn't realize. I mean, <laughs> I, I never realized how close you. we are. <laughs> and, you know, she sends me the corniest shit all the time, but I don't even have to give you examples because she <laughs> No, I just <laughs> a random thing just come through. And you know, when they're great, you, you can take credit. When they're especially corny, you can just blame it on the kid. <laughs> I, I can blame it on the kid. And then I know when it's way, way out there that it's coming from, like, mm, Nanu Nanu. It's right, from Robin. right, there it is, there it is. <laughs> well, Sarah, do you mind if I share one of my favorite stories about how you have turned your, your tragic grief into something positive, how you've done grief differently and how I got to be a part of that? Sure. All right. All right, I have an assign I had an assignment for you. Did you get your homework done? Did you get your, your props? Oh yes. Leave it done. Yes, I got Leave my props. There. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you'll you'll hear the cue. You made me break it on a sweat. Like, what was I supposed to do? Oh no. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to make this story short. You guys and many of you have probably read this online, but it's such an awesome story. Last summer, last May, we were all out in Vegas for my big shiny show event and it was over, everybody had gone. Sarah's daughter tried her best to send flowers to her mom, but when all was said and done, because it was Mother's Day, when all was said and done, it was actually $2 cheaper for her to get a round-trip ticket out <laughs> to stay with us, 
rather than send you a dozen roses or whatever it was. Right. <laughs> so she's, you know, she's like, forget that. I'm going to go hang out with my mom because we still have this big two-room ginormous suite. So I was glad to, you know, share that with her. So she came and you guys, you know, she's, she's Miss Busy Girl. She just took you guys down on this weekend. Mm -hmm. You guys have a great time. So she's got all these plans and you were inviting me all over the place. And, and I really was like, eh, I'm tired. I just want to collapse. Well, I decided to go ahead. I just felt nudged. Carrie, go. You know, how often are you going to be in Vegas with your friend Sarah? Go have nuts. Go get nuts. So we went to <laughs> have nuts. We went to this show and it just pulled up on my feed too called, I don't know what it was called, but like Frederick's Super Duper Mind Reading Magic Show, something like that. So we go there and it's the three of us and we're, wa we're on the escalator going upstairs to where the theater is and for no reason at all, Sarah looks at me and says, I'll try not to think of the pink elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's so weird. I was like, okay. You know, I didn't know what she meant. I thought it was like some inside joke between her and her kid. But I was like, I'm not even going to go there. She's just going to have some cockamamie story to go with it. So we're in this show, and the show has started, and he's asking for volunteers. And I raise my hand because I'm a big ham. I like the attention. So I go up on stage. Or well, I go up on stage. No, no, was that it? Did we volunteer? No, no, no. He didn't volunteer. Oh, they threw the Frisbees he out. He threw the yeah. Frisbees. He threw four Frisbees. And then he said, okay, whoever caught the Frisbees, throw them again. So then four more people had the Frisbees because he wanted to make sure his selection and people was very random. So there uh -huh. I am up on the stage. And then I do my little thing. And he's still going on and on. It's like he's got three or four things going on at once. Remember that? He's like getting numbers from this person, names yeah, from this person. Yeah. And it was yeah. like all over. I don't and then so he says, okay, now I need a new volunteer. But instead of throwing the Frisbees, I'm going to do this. I got such goosebumps. God, I wish you could see it. He holds up a pink stuffed elephant. And I'm like, I mean, I mean I'm sure I have people didn't know what's going on while I'm reacting to this elephant. And I look at, at Amy and Sarah, and they're like, and we're laughing. We're cracking up. So this pink elephant gets thrown around the room. And, and I mean, it was just, I'm still tingling right now. That was crazy. So I went back to my seat after my little spiel was over, and at the end of the show, he says, if you'd like me to, you know, sign autographs or whatever, I'll be, I'll be here at this spot. And we really wanted to tell him this story about the pink elephant, but right. I was tired, and I was like, let's just go. So we go, we're walking down that, or sliding down that same escalator, and there he is at the bottom of it, and there's only one person ahead of us. So we're like, we are going to tell him. So we wait in line. And when it's our turn, he asks Sarah to pick her favorite number. Mm -hmm. And her favorite number is actually either 11 or 22, a little of both. But she was being kind to me, and she chose my favorite number. And that's what he wrote down. Yeah, Prop got it right one. here. <laughs> Prop so number he one, 17. The, na the name, the number 17. But all <laughs> that, I didn't even catch that at first. Because then he says, um... Do you, what did he say? He goes, do you understand or know what automatic writing is? And mm -hmm. Sarah says, yes, I am a practicing medium, and my son has crossed over. And, and, we, and she's trying to tell him the elephant story. But he goes, before I went, before I came downstairs, I got an urge to write something. And he pulls a business card out of his pocket. Go. And it says, Adam. Adam. It said Adam, <laughs> and we flipped out. We burst into tears, and Amy, her daughter's flipping out. She's taking pictures, and we're just, like, all lit up. And, you know, he gets these stories all the time, I'm sure. It didn't even matter to him. So, we, you know, we went on our merry way, and her daughter was so elated. She's like, i gotta, I got to call all my friends. So we're all excited, just waiting for her. She's texting and calling. You won't believe what just happened. So, I mean, it was such a beautiful, magical miracle that I knew at that point why I was nudged to go out that night. And I'm so glad I didn't miss that. And so that is just one way that you can do grief differently is to, you know, find the signs and embrace the messages that they give you. It's so fun. It's like a treasure hunt. It's so much hunt. fun. It Isn't is. It it's like, so it fun? is a treasure hunt, scavenger hunt. It's like a puzzle piece. It's like cookie crumbs. <laughs> Like everything all in one. I know. And so you can just you just have to be open to receive it and in that higher vibration and acknowledge it from where they are now, not where you wish they were or have been, but where they are now. And when you're open to receive it, just more opens up and more opens up and more opens up.
That's right. But yeah. I always say the more you see, the more you see. Mm-hmm. And isn't the more that you the see, the more you see. Yeah. And that, that, that evening we had in Vegas, yeah. there's no way we could ever recreate that night. There's it no was way. Just, no. Everything oh. just laid out perfectly. Okay, get your other prop. Because she says, I'm not even going to think about the pink elephant. <laughs> So I was on a mission when I was in Europe to find her a pink elephant. <laughs> and you did. Gerald bought that for her f- from me. So thanks, Gerald. <laughs> so I keep her right here by my, on my, by my computer. <laughs> yeah. No, that was so neat. That was so I love those experiences. I have ex- crazy. And that was a one because it was such a surprise on Mother's Day. Such a surprise on Mother's Day and with your daughter wow. there to experience it yes. too. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Adam. I mean, I yes. got the gift. I was so touched by it. And this guy, the paranormal guy, was amazing. So if anybody goes to Vegas, Frederick De Silva. He was. Yeah, he was cute cool. Too. He was awesome. <laughs> he was cute, too. <laughs> All right, I'm going to invite awesome. you. Do you have a favorite Adam um, doing grief differently story to share? Oh, gosh, I got so many I of them. So um, many. The fun ones are like, well, when he gives me messages to pass on to some of his friends or people that knew him, that's what's kind of cool Aww. because I can be, I can still, I feel, it feels almost like it's still the mommy mode, but a different mommy mode. Does that uh-huh. make sense? Absolutely. So I get to do that and um, just to see them perk up or to see anyone to give, a, 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 a add a message to them and that's see them so just good. like, you can just feel their grief and just worry, just lessen, just go, oh my gosh, this is real. You know how we kind of felt when we got the business card with exactly. Adam on it. You just feel <gasps> so. Like, those you like are get high. You live off this emotional high for a while. It's yeah, it feels great. Yeah, yeah. And I can have conversations with them at any given time, at any any point of the day. Now, you know, before I had to feel like I had to sit down into and clear my space where it was quiet. But now it's just random. Like whatever I'm doing, I can I, have a com- I can be in the grocery store and I'm just talking away and. Um, I mentioned this before in one of the groups or whatever. I said, you have to pretend like I have a, like my Bluetooth on or whatever. People just see me talking. That's great. <laughs> so I can do that. You know, That's it's a job. different relationship. Yes. But, um, to be open to it, uh, and let go of old beliefs. So he's really, uh, it's cracked my heart open. Um, and it's been a beautiful, beautiful experience and a beautiful ride. And we're working on that together to help others. So that's what we're doing. Um, yeah. Do you feel at all, have you, has enough time gone by? Do you, what does your grief feel like now? Because I know just everybody just needs time. You can't feel better tomorrow. I don't care how differently you do grief. You need time. Right. Yeah, you need time. You need time. Time. And do you. Do and time's you, just man-made anyway. So it's true. take that. So don't, have, don't put limitations on and yourself. You can't, and don't feel bad if you are having a good day. If oh, you, yeah. If you're able to heal quicker, then by all means do it. Don't feel obligated to hang on to that heaviness and grief. You're not doing anybody a service. They no, you're you right. There's happy. a lot of people. You get to right. be happy. And, and if you're happy, put your own oxygen mask on first because then everybody wow. else around you can feel your good vibrations. Yeah. And I remember getting that messages from him in the beginning and not and even through the archangels would say, you know, you, you go do this and be this and, you know, do things to make you feel good. And I go, well, I don't want to feel good. <laughs> I, I don't want to feel yeah. good. I want to be where he's at. And so I can see when you get into... Uh, um, stuck mm-hmm. or um, suicidal feelings you want to be with it where they are but Adam told me many a times over that he would he did not want to switch places with me right the, the grand the plan was much grander um, and so even though I didn't want to hear that <laughs> I knew it was true that there was something bigger that we needed to do, to do together to help others that was already like there yes. I could see it so this is a partnership. Fog. This is a partnership between you two now. This is your plan. I mean, there's other things. It trickles in all places. But one of the plans that you and Adam set up before you came to Earth was this group. I mean, you know, maybe not specifically this, 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 and this. Right, in general. Like this yes. video. Things like this group. You guys chose this path in your lives to help other people. I know. How trippy is that? So when you start getting in that frame of mind, you're not going to be helpful if you just, you know, want to get dead and cross over and cry and grieve and all that stuff. You're not doing your part of the deal. So there is a reason. It's a contract. And even even if in other cases you're not supposed to do a big show or, or have a page or whatever, there's still learning to be done. And it's it's an on purpose. 
So and we all have, yeah. yeah, yeah, thanks. We're all light workers. I truly believe we're all light workers. Some of us have just like, you know, 15 watt bulb, <laughs> right. but we're all light workers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, we're planting seeds, whether it's just in your family, in your neighborhood, or, you know, through groups or whatever. We're all just, just being a better person and being more positive is going to help mm -hmm. in general anyway, for sure. Um, so there's lots. Everything is always so intertwined and woven in layers and to everything that we... That's absolutely think. true. And there's always, you know, many interpretations. One person's going to get out of this video something different than somebody else did. And um, I want to... Yeah, and then listen to it next week and you can yeah, might pick up something different. It's just because you're in a different true. vibration. Exactly. So, yeah. And I want you to guys to be sure to, to honor your, your sad feelings, though. Don't, don't feel like you're, you know sabotaging yourself because sadness is a real legit feeling just you mm -hmm. know remind yourself that you can pull out of it and it, it may be baby steps but you can just set the intention yeah. have trust in in god your angels you know even your loved one that crossed over keep that faith and know that you will be able to climb out of this yeah you got to go through the release uh, crying is a great release as you and i know all too well yes. the, the crying is a good release and the, it's the releasing of um your expectations of what you wanted in your life and that expectation of that person's not, you know, in the role anymore is changed up everything that you kind of thought your life was going to entail. So yeah. you've got to um, be yeah. more mindful, like you always say, stay more present in the now, focus on today, not worry about tomorrow because you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. And you know, you know what helps me, this is something I learned recently and I, I stick to this, is that your higher self always has your best interest at heart. So even when things are like falling apart, beyond that, there is a plan. You can't fix yeah. things until they're broken sometimes. And so. you can't see it. And if you and I would have known, you know, when you and I met, all this that was going to take place in this three and a half years, we would have probably been so overwhelmed. With I know. Yeah, right. And full of worries. Uh-huh. We may be so real. worried and not like no. Oh, so you got to get the little bits and little chunks and trust whatever comes wow. through, and and it's okay if you change your mind. That's and that's okay. That's another you know? thing. You know, I get all these readings and I have all these things in my path, but I'm finally learning that just because it's there doesn't mean that I don't have some power to change that. I'm right. getting to that point. Right. That's just where your energy is directing at that moment. The majority of your energy that they're reading or whatever. And that, um, I truly believe we all go to heaven anyway. So if you want to take the the road full of potholes because there's more experiences, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, everyone's different. And there's many times you and I, we felt like that we needed, we got detoured many a times, but you're still going to get to the same destination. I know, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's right. Don't resist you it. Know? Go with it. And you know, they were telling and me some, that all the time. Don't resist it. I didn't get that what that meant. I'm finally in a place of not resisting and not worrying. I don't know what's right. going to happen with this particular endeavor. But I already know that my best interest is being looked out for, so I'm going to go with it and not stress. Well, right. well, we weren't raised that way. We were supposed to have everything planned out. Absolutely. I think about the What you're going to major in. I <laughs> know. Well, it's like my, out, so. my, I'm signing my boy up for high school, and he's supposed mm -hmm. to you know, mm -hmm. figure out what he wants to take as a senior. <laughs> he doesn't even know what he wants for dinner tomorrow. Give me a break. Right. So that's being more mindful, and that's why we've got to spread that because, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it just causes more emotional baggage for, for us. And that's part of this thing with grief that and through your awakening process, you've got to let go of that emotional baggage. Mm -hmm. Everybody process. does it in all different. It's a tough process, but so worth it. So and worth actually, it. Actually, it's a daily process because you might have created something from a couple days ago. That, definitely. I am through the big chunk of my healing, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that I'm like, you know, sitting on my cloud, you know sunshine and roses i do have those days but i also have challenges that i need to you know i'm a human i'm having my human right. experiences so you know sure the way it but is. we can look at those challenges so differently now yes and not feel like a victim you feel like okay the universe is presenting me something how am i going to choose to deal with this right it's like you we are i know we're <laughs> Just don't tell anyone I'm grown up. <laughs> <laughs> like with you coming out with all these new, you're a new endeavor with the new, you know, personal videos, your solo I know, videos. I'm totally growing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, how you've been able to release and work through all your mommy issues from childhood. Uh -huh. That's huge. That's huge. And how the people, how many people you're going to help with that because you can come out and talk about it. Because we were not raised to talk about it as no children. This, this generation, yes, now because of social media, mm -hmm. they can. Whatever they want. They just say a little too much sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. But um, at least they can express and they're not closing up their throat chakra. 
you know? Oh, yeah, mine uh, is wide open. Yeah, yours is wide open. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to propose something to you. Sure. I'd like to use my throat chakra, but, you know, you, you often call me your partner in crime. I think I do more crimes than you always do, but <laughs> I don't think you've ever done a crime. But um, I, I but think about them. Do you do think about them? <laughs> <laughs> so I have in my brain, I call these little silly little things Sarah's shenanigans. So we're going to pull another one of Sarah's shenanigans, even though I think this one may have been my um, my – my little baby here, but let's, let's try this. So I don't know if you would like to offer a channeled message from Adam first, or if you would like me to do some channeled light language with Adam. Okay. Who, okay. who wants to go first? You choose. Do the light language first. Okay. Because there might be something out of the light language. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe you can translate it. And I've been practicing this morning with Adam. I don't know if this is him or not. You may be able to tell by the tone of my voice. <laughs> he, goes, I am, he goes, I am part Hawaiian. It's, the last name's Kajawa, you know. <laughs> okay. Because it does sound like Hawaiian. Okay, so, so if I channel my husband's, I'll just pretend like it's Adam's. <laughs> I guess, don't you, it's, it's Moana's. It's part of the Dole family. Right. The Dole pineapple. <laughs> That's what I heard. That was a silly message. You're okay. Part of the, Corn family, Adam. Okay. So again, Sarah and I, we are not conventional. We like to do it differently. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I'm we do it. Wait, I'm not even, I'm going to be sneaky. I'm not going to let anybody see. <laughs> Sarah, what are we doing? Well, you're going to do it first then. I'm doing it first. Okay. Hang on. Oh, do I have enough? Oh, wait, I need a little bit more. It's a familiar feeling. Okay, ready? This is my channeled language from Adam Kujawa. Oso holo komateke ele hele mele hele holo holo hola mele hele ele ele. おそこのもてけ、エレヘレメレヘ、エレホロオラアラマレレレレレ。エヘソロモロオトモテネネネ、エレハラハラアラアラメレレレレロ。オロホロモ、アラハラメレレ。エレホロオロマララレレ。エレ
dry. Oh, well, but that's my a little bit of a. <laughs> We should have practiced. <laughs> with the helium. helium. You'll see my one balloon. I got a whole bouquet over here. <laughs> you got another one, but. <laughs> All, right. All right, Adam, tell us what you got to say once your mom composes herself. Regarding the doing grief differently with Adam and Sarah, he said this is a, a, a great accumulation of all the experiences that she and I have had together in the past four years, but not even in the past four years, throughout her whole life together because of love, the love that I have for her and that she has for me, the everlasting love between um, a mother and her son. Aww, that's so that's a beautiful message. Yeah. And he has one for you. Oh. He says, just keep on coming. <laughs> and, <laughs> that's enough! <laughs> that's enough! I was waiting for He's more, but that's number. enough. Gosh, I am so embarrassed. Oh my, oh my gosh. You turned purple. Oh my gosh. I'm like, oh, and Willy Wonka the blueberry. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Sarah and Adam, <coughs> thank you for a great video. Be sure to go and join their Facebook group. It's full of inspiration and not only does Sarah share her stories, she very much encourages everybody else. She wants it to be a discussion on how you too have done grief differently. It is a place of sharing, not just teaching, sharing, learning, conversing, the whole bit. So thank yeah. you for watching our, our <laughs> shenanigans and letting us uh, bring out this video to you and, and introducing Adam once again and their new group together. Yeah. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you, so Carrie. And thank you for all that you do and for being open to the world and exposing yourself I just to everyone and all your emotions. <laughs> I just keep on exposing myself and I'm going to keep on coming. I'm going to end it with, she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. All right. That's gotta, enough. I'm I gotta shut down. I gotta shut down. I'll see you. I'll see you two later. Bye. Bye bye. I love you.